I want to make sure I want to make sure VMware is solid because that's the first thing I'm going to talk to. Yeah. Uh, Grandview Hospital about. Yeah. Then you know what? Also, then I'm, I'm going to give you seven Thursday. minutes worth, and I'll tell you why. Because then the next time when you get your solid, you'll have a running head start based on what I'm doing right here. Besides, okay. seven minutes is really about my span of attention. So. Okay. So. Um, all right. So VMware. Uh, basically, VMware is one of the most exciting technologies I think I've ever seen ever. And I think it's as, as exciting as going all the way back to the days when networks, local area networks, were first invented. We literally are having one call closes with this. We're having one call closes with it because it has very powerful ROI um, repercussions. You can save a lot of money real fast with VMware. Hard cost savings and soft cost savings. So having said that, let me tell you a little bit about what it is in the few minutes we have, and then I'll come back to this on another day. The three value propositions that it speaks to is business continuance. Customers love to hear about business continuance. The second thing it deals with is server consolidation, but more importantly, application consolidation. Customers love to hear about consolidation because it means money, savings. The third thing is, is it does something called application portability, which is off the charts. Um, applications are largely not portable with a mouse click, but with VMware, applications are portable with a mouse click. More on that in just a moment. Here's basically what's happening. If you look at any typical server that's in any one of our customers, it's running an application that's sitting on top of an operating system that's sitting on top of a server. This is generically depicted, and here's an HP server. Okay. This is kind of a little more real-world example. Running Great Plains accounting system on a Windows 2003 server, and it's on a DL570. Now, the, the challenge is that hardware computing horsepower has continued to get faster and faster and faster every year. One of Moore's laws is that it doubles at half the price every two years. And that has been happening. Software hasn't kept pace with that. And software is always trying to catch up to hardware. Once it starts to catch up, then hardware makes a big leap. Software catches up eventually. Hardware makes a big leap. We're kind of at this point right now where hardware is so far ahead of software that basically servers are not, <clears throat> not being uh, utilized to their full potential. How can we tell if a server is being utilized to its full potential? It's easy. You can dig down underneath of the hood and you can see what the utilization rate is of that server. Now, what are we really looking for? We're looking for the utilization rate of the CPU, how hard is the processor working. We're looking at utilization rates of memory, how hard is the memory working and is there adequate memory to do everything we need to do, and I.O. subsystems like the disk and network interfaces and network ports. Okay? So basically, smart people at this company have studied the way Intel-based servers operate, and they've drawn the correct conclusion that most of the Intel servers are barely even breaking into a sweat. Now, there will be exceptions. A database app or Microsoft Exchange, they all have higher you know, utilization rates than most. But basically, it's a Microsoft best practice that you can't run multiple apps on a box. And everybody knows you can't run multiple operating systems on one processor. You just can't. Because Microsoft ser uh, Server OS, it's a single server operating system. Okay? So some people try to run multiple apps on one OS on one box, but that's always a no-no. The application vendors say they, they won't support you if you run multiple apps that way. And uh, you, you just kind of know how it goes. So best practices, one app, one OS, one box. Problem is, the box is capable of so much more, we're just not exploiting its full potential. So VMware came and did something very special. They said, let's take the, the operating system and the application, and we're going to package it up. We're going to put a little bell on it. And we're going to output this thing as one disk file. Okay, so I'm going to call this gp.vmdk. 
and that stands for Great Plains VM Disk File. So everything that's going on in here is described and outputted as one humongous file, given that get given a file name, and, and I'm just calling it that for purposes of simplicity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first thing it does is it takes this entire thing, which is thousands and thousands and thousands of files, and it has just described them as one. Very simple. Okay. Now that's not the elegance, but that's one of the things that it does. The second thing that VMware does is it replaces this operating system with its own virtual operating system. A virtual operating system lets you simultaneously run multiple OSs at the exact same time. So I'm going to call that one Linux, I'm going to call that one Win2K, and I'm going to call that one Novell Netware 6.1, and this is a 2003 server for my example. Okay. So you can simultaneously run multiple operating systems on the same machine at the exact same time. Microsoft can't do that. It's a single server operating system. VMware is a virtual operating system, which means it can run multiple operating systems at the exact same time. This is not cheesy like OS2 and dual boot, where you were either in OS2, or you took that down and you were in DOS, or you were in DOS, or you're in Windows. This is operating systems running simultaneously right along, right on alongside. So it's virtual, kind of like that Citrix server, ran all those little virtual sessions. This is running virtual servers. Okay? So first thing, multiple OSs per box. Second thing it does is because this is packaged as this, we can now run multiple of these packages on one server. This gift wrapped package is called a VM or a virtual machine. You can run between 4 and 20 VMs per server. Okay. okay. Now, people have talked about doing server consolidation for a real long time, but you know what? Nobody's ever really gotten around to it. And it's because in the Microsoft paradigm, it's impossible. Because your servers are starting to get older, they're three years old, four years old, five years old, they start saying, hey man, it's time to replace these. And while we replace them, let's do server consolidation. So VMware is actually, let's see if this is a correct statement, first with what you just put up there. VMware is actually consolidating servers anywhere from four to twenty servers to one. Correct. Okay. Yep. But what it's really doing is it's consolidating the applications. Okay, so let me just say what I'm going to say, and then this is probably all that time permits. People have wanted for many years to do server consolidation. Mm -hmm. It's time to refresh these servers. They're coughing and wheezing. Let's buy fewer, bigger ones, and then those fewer, bigger ones will take the place of a whole shitload of old little ones. That's the idea behind server consolidation. You've got fewer of them at the end of the day. But what ends up happening is, the server comes in, you got to put an OS on it. Once you put the OS on it, really only one app can live on that OS. And so what ends up happening is it's just a tech refresh. Mm -hmm. So we had 20 servers there. We didn't replace them with five. We replaced them with 20 newer servers. So I reduced it by four to one. So next year, you may not have to buy. So that's 100 servers. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So um, the main thing here is it lets you consolidate your applications onto fewer servers. So it's giving you server consolidation as a byproduct. What it's really doing is it's consolidating your applications. Multiple apps, one box. Okay. But through the effort of application consolidation, you pick up this beautiful byproduct of you really have less servers at the end of the day. So you back your way into server consolidation. The second thing is this VM, it's one disk file. You can send it as an email attachment. You can mouse click it with file manager. You can copy this onto another box while it's live and running. Okay. So if this was email, I could mouse click exchange and throw it onto another box and it can be dissimilar. While everyone's doing email, and nobody even has a disruption in service. Okay. This is mind-blowing stuff. So, 
Let's take it a step further. We really need to go. Oh, uh, man. One, one thing I left yeah. out right was, getting good. One yeah, thing I left out was uh, that Scott actually had a jacket on and Scott was walking up the window, so he's got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And EM, let me just go let me go real quick, man. EMC environment. Yeah. Can you virtualize the virtual machine so basically send it over to a shared storage environment? Yes, you can. You can okay. you can boot your VMs from SAN. Okay. You can also pass raw LUNs right into VMware. Oh, so that's sweet. So that means you, like resizing really isn't a problem, is it? Absolutely not. And you can resize dynamically. Uh, which is part of that. Okay, you answered my harder harder question. This is only the tip of the iceberg here though, so we should yeah. Or do not erase. Huh? Do not erase. Yeah. Donuts. <laughs> One of the files got corrupted. Go Everything else looks really close. good. So, I am going to do files. I can think of the, the one where I said you felt the best, we didn't get corrupted. Oh, no. crash. Yeah, where Scott Turner has an office, or not office, uh, conference, conference room. Oh, no. Let me check this calendar. Hold on. How are you, Cassandra? I'm good. How are you? Good. Yeah. MTM Technology found me after extra call. Good. How are you? I'll pop back in. I'll see if he's there. Oh, hold on one second. Here I got caught. I bought my wife something very similar to that when she had oh, my yeah? my second son. Oh, okay. So what are the three diamonds? Yeah. And you sent her love letters. <laughs> That's nice. Hey, Sal. Looking for you. Great. I'm going to try to grab a uh, projector. <laughs> I don't know if you can see out there. He's out. Okay. <laughs> if this is open, we will use this. If you don't mind, can I film you? Hmm. They're, yes. they're very helpful. I will be right back. I gotta grab my laptop. I'm not somebody around here. Are you serious? They uh, schedule the date. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. 